Hi, I'm Denshi. This is my open box rice, I guess you could call it, it's my configuration to open box. And today's video is actually going to be about exactly that, window managers. So window manager basics featuring open box. Let's get right into this. Things you're going to need to use a window manager. So in this case, as I said, open box. But to get into open box, you're going to need a login manager. So like LightDM or SCDM or GDM. If you're using a desktop environment, you already have this. All you got to do is go into here and in the arch case, sudo pacman s open box. Basically just install that. And and then you can log out into your login manager and select open box as a session and you'll be logged into a completely black screen with nothing just a right click menu and programs accessible so that brings us on to the next thing you want there to be cool things like all oh, transparency and effects and you know look at this cool dock where things grow when they when I put my mouse over them to get that to work you need a compositor I'm using PyCom in this case PyCom's pretty good it's very good very well configurable terminal emulator speaking exactly of the terminal you're gonna need something like termite this is termite over here you can get something like xterm or for example and xterm is super minimalist and stuff but you can configure it to look pretty good as well you're also going to need docs and panels oh boy so in this case i have tint 2 at the top it's literally just a dock it's got a tray over here system tray it's got like an internet thing and it's got time and this stuff you can add it with this cool configuration that has i believe it's setting yeah tint 2 settings and then you can go edit theme and you can edit everything in here and stuff uh you're gonna need a long Launcher or menu. So I mentioned that when you're kicked into open box and a lot of other window managers, you right click and oh look at this. There's a bunch of things that I don't know what they are. And <laughs> that, that happens a lot. The solution to this problem is to configure some kind of software that automatically, you know, gets your programs in here. Because when you'll do that for the first time in open box, right click and you see a list of programs. Those are going to be a lot of programs and categories which you might not even have installed in your system. So you're going to need to use something like ob menu generator, ob menu generator, or there's something called menu maker or m maker for short, that's the actual command. So menu maker, both available in the Arch repos or AUR. You're also finally going to need Pulse Audio. So you're going to need some kind of software to manage all your audio stuff. And if you're if you're good, you can configure awesome. There's a great mental outlaw video called Audio on Linux without a bloat or something like that. And it's a great video where he talks about how to configure also very minimally and you know not have to use Pulse Audio, but I prefer Pulse Audio. It, it just saves me a lot of time and also it's just the Linux audio thing. But Pulse Audio, you're probably gonna need that package if your audio just doesn't work and you're launching open box you're like oh my god the audio doesn't work it's probably that you don't have pulse audio anyway here's my top tip a read wiki pages so this is obviously one of the obvious tips i'm not actually a big proponent of something like man is essentially a piece of software that allows you to view sort of documents that explain how to use the software, so like man, man itself, so you can get a manual entry on man. So it's just manual entries for software on your computer. Uh, now, I'm not a big proponent of that. What I do like is wikis, though, because wikis can be adapted and they can be changed, and more specifically, they're much more rapidly changing than something like a manual. So I recommend the Arch Wiki for everything. Pretty much every program has a page on it, it's really well written, and has a lot of information, and forum posts and questions can often be outdated, though. Something I was doing was searching up things like, oh, how do I get this working? And there's like a forum post from 2008, and it's not the solution I need because all those packages are out, out of date and they're not even used anymore, and a bunch of other problems. So rely on wikis, not forum posts, unless they're more recent. Top tip B, avoid desktop environment programs. So a lot of programs you may use could be part of your DE. So there is something like Gwenview, and it's a piece of software that basically is part of KDE as the image viewer. It's 18.79 megabytes, but there's a bunch of stuff I need to install for it, and it's not con convenient. So you can use alternatives. So for example, I have a software called SXIV open up the spaceman sxiv and i can view the image and it works perfectly fine no need for gwen view it's much smaller and takes up less and that's the cool thing you get to try alternatives and lighter variants of software you may use so that was an image viewer you can do this for lots of other stuff these will fit in better and will not pull as many dependencies most of the time some of them are built from source which sort of defeats the purpose and you can try to go for gtk if possible i recommend using gtk programs when possible if it even has to have gtk because sometimes it's just basic extra stuff oh no Oh, my window manager looks ugly. So I mentioned before you go into open box and all you see is a black screen and you can right click and there's a bunch of text on, you know, programs you can use. It's not very, you know, beautiful. I don't think my quote unquote rice, if you even call that, uh, it's pretty awful. It's just got a panel and a dock and stuff. It's, it's not good looking. It's minimalist, I guess, quote unquote, but it's not super good looking, but it, it looks better than just a black screen and that ugly stock open box border. 
So how do you actually get things to look good? Try a different theme or change GTK theme. So for example, in uh, OpenBox, you got obconf. You can go in here and change themes for OpenBox. Uh, you can have something like Alex appearance and you can change the icon theme, the different icon themes and stuff. Change how, you know, things look in GTK. And that's a great way to get things to look good. There's also trying somebody's dot files or going on GitHub or GitLab and there's endless supplies of dot files or configuration files. You can change fonts and terminal that's the thing that i found really useful i'm using hack as a font right now so if i neo fetch you'll see that it says i'm using hack 11 so at size 11 as a font because it looks really good there's also configuring a panel better so, so use something like this dock for example that may be part of making things look good any last words for me you gotta have an open mind willing to learn i started using open box around four months ago or at least tried it out four months ago and i have looked back a lot of times and have fallen back onto a DE. You're going to have to do things differently a lot of ways because desktop environments have sort of ecosystems like in Plasma you get certain programs and applets and same things in GNOME. GNOME especially it's super closed and stuff. So you can always fall back onto a desktop environment if, if you mess up. That's why you have a login manager. You log out, you have LXDM or Light DM or SDDM or whatever, and you can use those to log into your, your comfy desktop environment and you can stop worrying about the window manager for a second if you really have to get work done and you're not ready to configure OpenBox's endless amount of keyboard shortcuts. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this little video. Just wanted to make that because I wanted to discuss OpenBox. I've really been enjoying using it. And goodbye.